All right, this is gonna be my first video. I'm gonna talk about my training for this week. And, uh, but before I do that, I just wanted to give a quick intro of who I am, where I'm at. So I, I was an above average high school runner, uh, more of a mid distance guy. My PRs from high school were, uh, I think I just broke 16 in the 5K, um, 153 for 800, uh, 48 for the 400. Um, and I ran one semester in college, but since I'd only run like 20 to 30 miles a week in high school and I didn't run in the summers or the winters, like I didn't really have a lot of miles under me. And when I went to college and we had to run a lot more miles and a lot more intensity, uh, it was just too much training for me. I didn't handle it very well, uh, too many miles. And I was trying too hard every workout and uh, I didn't really have my faith in my coach to fix it so I just quit my freshman year and I uh, never really saw what I could do um, and then in 2011 when I was 25 I ran a half marathon uh, without any training and it was horrible I ran about two and a half hours except I walked and like shuffled the last several miles and um, that I thought I would be able to do better. And that was a wake up call. Like you actually have to train. Um, and then through my upper twenties, like 28, 29, I ran a few races where, uh, you know, like a month or two before the race, I, I would jog 20 or 30 miles a week, um, and then run pretty decent times. Uh, I think I got, I was running like around like one twenty four half marathon at best. Um, and then I started to train a little bit more. Uh, I think like between November 2015, um, like a little before that, like late 2015 to January 2016, I had trained a little more and dropped my PR to 121. And then after I ran that 121, uh, actually like 121.58, so I had just broken 122. Um, for the three months after that, I decided to build mileage and train a little more regularly. I ran a 116 at a half marathon in April. Um, and then after that, I hurt my back, not related to running, but running made my back hurt and uh, both during the run and after the run. So <clears throat> I dropped my mileage a ton, waited for my back to get to more manageable levels of pain never fully healed. It still hurts every day. And when I run, but, uh, it's manageable now. So anyway, I lost a lot of that 116 fitness and toward the end of 2016, I started training again for that race in November. Um, and I ran a 118 in 2016, November. And then, uh, I continued to train after that ran another half in January, uh, two weeks ago. And, uh, ran a 112 25 so I still um so I had built up to like 50 miles a week early 2016 and then dropped way off and then uh like leading into November I had built up to 30 miles a week again and then between November and that January race I averaged 41 miles a week I think um and the vast majority of all that is just like easy jogging so uh, I counted six workouts leading into that 112 race where my heart rate was above 150. Um, so I could definitely improve my training, pr improve the quality of the training and improve the mileage as well. So that's where I'm at right now. It's been two weeks since that race. I took a week uh, kind of recovery. And for this past week, um, I've been bumming off my wife's book that she got for Christmas, a uh, very popular book um by Fitzinger and Ladder and uh teaches you how to get fast for road races. Um so I'm doing the base training right now in this book. There's two kinds of training. Let me just go over what the training is like from this book. Uh if you're not really familiar with running training, um what you can do is take your PR, the fastest time you've run for a certain distance. And then you can also take your heart rate, the, your max heart rate. Um, like if you run really, really hard, what your heart rate gets up to at its absolute max. 
And then from those two pieces of data, you can figure out how fast you want to run certain kinds of workouts to get different kinds of physiological benefits. Um, so you'll figure out paces. The paces will either be relative to um, what you can run at a certain heart rate. That is, a, the heart rate is like calculated as a percentage of your max heart rate. Um, so that's kind of like what you can run at a certain effort level. And then you also have paces that are relevant to your PRs, like what you actually run in races. Um, so yeah, basically you, you figure out where you're at. Um, there's like different kinds of training you can do, like speed training, lactate threshold training, endurance training, general aerobic recovery just different kinds of workouts you can do each day. And for each different one, you figure out which pace you're doing so that you're running just fast enough to get the benefit of that kind of workout um, and no faster than that so that you don't exhaust yourself more without getting any benefit from working harder um, and no slower than that. So you're making sure you get the full benefit. So you have, you have to kind of learn um, how to run the right paces and they do a good job in the book of explaining um, how to get in the ballpark and then I think you just develop a sense of it as you go and you you monitor your heart rate and your paces and everything so anyway that's how that works and then there's two kinds of training plans and there's base training which is more of the lower intensity types of workouts but you're increasing your mileage week to week um, at a faster rate or at a rate period so like you're trying to get used to running more miles per week, increasing volume while keeping intensity sort of lower. Um, and then there's like the real training, which they give 12 week plans. So you'll do like a 12 week cycle of training and uh, it'll start off like not super intense and it'll like build up in intensity. Then you'll get one week that's a recovery week that's a little bit easier. Then you'll build up in intensity and hit like the most intense highest volume week and then you'll sort of come down from that and then the last two weeks before your race you'll um, like go even lower volume and uh, not so intense but maybe a little bit faster work um, to get you ready for your race rested and ready to to run fast um, so that's kind of how that works so i'm doing the base training and i'm i started on a 46 mile week and I'm not really sure that's what I should be doing right now. Um, I'm gonna see how I feel. Um, well, I mean, I've done one week. I did the 46 mile week and I'm gonna do the 46 mile week again. And I feel like I'm just gonna kind of chill here and not actually follow the plan of increasing mileage and just kind of repeat some weeks so that basically I'm increasing mileage even slower and more cautiously than what they suggest. Um, because I don't have a lot of mileage on me lifetime like I ran very low mileage in high school, ran low mileage before I started to get more serious. The most I've ever done was the 11 weeks of 50 miles a week in early 2016. And it's been a while since I did that. So um, trying to be cautious. Anyway, the week this week was um, on Monday, you take it easy. Uh, well, you take it off, you don't run at all. And then uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, Maybe I should look exactly. It doesn't really matter. The gist of it was you do three days that are general aerobic. So those are like kind of easier days. Um, and uh, on one of those days, you tack on a speed workout. Um, so that that's three of the seven days of the week. And then two of the days of the week are recovery days. One was completely off. One was a very slow four mile jog. And so that's five of the seven days of the week. The remaining two days were endurance runs, which are the longest runs you do. One of those was a 10 miler and the other was a 13 miler. And for that, they give a really wide range of paces. And the way that you're supposed to do it is run the earlier miles in the run at the slower paces and then gradually build to the faster range of pace that you're supposed to do for endurance runs for the last few miles. Um, so the very first time I did it was the 10 miler earlier in the week. And even though my mile splits looked like perfect, 
because like it started close to seven minute miles and then it went all the way down to like I forgot I forgot how, what my fastest one was around like 610 um, and each one was faster I never slowed down I only sped up each mile um, the mile splits look good but the actual graph of my pace looked horrible and if I could have had the uh, half mile splits figured out I'm sure those would have looked horrible because what was happening was so I'd be running my mile or like that mile and halfway through it, I would look at my watch and see what my average pace was for this current mile so far. And it would be like too fast or too slow. And I'd be like, oh no, I need, I need to fix this. And so I'd make an adjustment. And then when I went through the mile split, it would be correct. Um, but that's like absolutely, you're not supposed to be all like jagged. That's the, the opposite of what you're supposed to be doing. So I was like speeding up, slowing down to try to get each mile split correct at least. Um, anyway, that's, I'm not too concerned about that because that was my first time trying it. It's kind of weird. It's faster paces than I'm used to running in, in practice, period. Um, and I'm not used to trying to like speed up slightly every mile. It's also a little bit hard to do when you're running outside and there's some miles that have inclines, some miles that have declines. Um, so it makes me feel like I'd rather be looking at my heart rate to figure out the effort I'm putting in rather than looking at my actual mile splits so that I have a steadily increasing heart rate. Um, but that's, your heart rate will kind of like drift up as you run to an extent as well so that, I don't know, I'll, I'll figure it out. It's not that big of a deal um, to try to do these absolutely perfectly, but I'm sure as I put more conscious effort into doing these endurance runs, um, I'll get used to this dynamic of like speeding up for the second one that I did yesterday, Sunday was a 13 mile run. And uh, I took a different approach where I was like, for the first three miles, I'll try to be uh, like seven minutes to 640 and try to stay in that range. And if I'm kind of a little bit all over the place within that range for those miles, then that's fine. And then for the second, third, go down to like 640 to like 625. Um, and stay in that range for those that middle third and then for the final third go down to like 625 to like 605 610 or whatever um and so not worrying about having every single mile being perfectly uh like a little bit faster actually made it so that i did did that better like i kind of did naturally um go a little bit faster each mile just trying to stay within the third um, so it was kind of like a weird mental trick, or maybe I just got a lot better after having practiced it once, um, before, but my splits were a lot better. Um, I mean, my paces were, my pace was, uh, a lot better, smoother, smoother graph. Um, and I did finish too fast though. So like my 11th mile, my average heart rate was 158. And I think. Like the max heart rate I want to be getting is like low 160s for these, I think. I'd have to look um, and do the calculation. But I think like the max I want to be is like low 160s. So I was I was doing pretty well to be at 158 with two miles to go. Um, but then I hit an uphill and I felt like I needed to keep going faster, you know, gradually getting faster each mile. And so I kind of attacked this uphill and at that point I'm getting close to like six minute miles and my heart rate kind of spiked doing uphill at six minute mile. Cause that's almost like, I mean, it wasn't a very steep hill. So I wouldn't say that it was like equivalent to running like race pace on a flat, but it's getting in that neighborhood and you're not supposed to be getting in that neighborhood. So my heart rate went up to like over 170 after I finished this hill. And uh, I saw that, noticed it, and started to take things a little bit easier. <clears throat> but um, my heart rate really didn't go back down to like low 160s. So my heart rate finished out um, way too high for the last two miles, but not really a big deal. Uh, the only weird, really weird thing that happened, which shouldn't have been weird at all, but 
I just, honestly, this just absolutely confounds me is, so on Saturday was general aerobic run, do seven miles total, but it also had some speed work tacked on. The speed work took the form of doing eight 100 meter strides. And uh, I know what a stride is, like generally speaking from like when I was in high school and uh, I'll just say what I think it is because I think it's what everybody thinks it is. Like you'll do strides as a warm up to get your heart rate up. Um, you also do strides as speed work like I was supposed to do here, um, you know, to get yourself used to running a little bit faster. But basically you always do strides when you're well rested. Well, usually, I guess some people tack them on to the end of a run. Um, well, I, I, don't, I don't know. To me, that's more something that you do when you're well rested and before a hard workout or before a race. And what you do is you get some really strong, controlled, relaxed, but fast, um, like running in, like very brief. So you'll ex accelerate kind of slowly. So you'll take like 30 or 40 meters to accelerate. Um, and then you'll, uh, I would think maybe hit around your mile pace at the max, maybe go a little bit harder than that for a few steps, maybe hit your absolute max effort for a few steps and then instantly back off that and decelerate. And so you get, you get like quite a few steps in at definitely at at least your half marathon pace, which is what I'm training for. And then a lot at like 10k 5k and you're accelerating you're accelerating you get to like one mile pace <clears throat> take several steps at that pace and then maybe get all the way to about full speed and then back off and it's just like a mental rep it's a physical rep it teaches you how to run properly but strong and relaxed and everything um that's what it is to me but to the authors of this book it is and I'll just read it exactly. For strides, and we're talking about 100 meter strides, and in particular, what I was supposed to do is eight 100 meter strides with 100 meter jog recovery in between them. For strides, accelerate to full speed by halfway, holding it for the remainder of the distance and then gradually slowing. One way to do strides is to run several, lap, several laps on the track, accelerating on the straightaways and jogging the turns. So accelerate to full speed, like not like 5k pace, not mile pace, not even like 400 pace, which you, you don't go all out in a 400 even, uh, but full speed, like as if you're running a hundred meter sprint, like you get to full speed by 50 meters into the stride and then you hold full speed for the whole remaining 50 meters. Like that's way more intense than what I picture a stride and what I ever have ever seen someone do a stride. Like nobody sprints all out for 50 meters. Like 50 meters is about all anyone can sprint all out. Like someone running a hundred meter dash can't sprint for a hundred meters. I mean, they're trying, they're going all out for the whole time, but they're slowing down before the race is even over. Like you hit, peak speed like two thirds or three quarters of the way in the race and then you're like slowing down in the last 20 meters um so i tried to do as they described because i'm thinking like they are not going off of like colloquially speaking strides or whatever they have they i mean they define everything in this book and describe your how you should be running everything very well and that description of strides is like clear and unambiguous and so I was like okay I'll try it but it sounds insane to me and so I did four of these on Saturday after I had done my general aerobic run so I was well warmed up and everything and I was like okay I gotta attack on these strides and then I'm gonna jog um, jog home uh, so five miles into the seven total miles I was gonna do I was gonna do these strides eight of them the strides the other 800 meters, the recoveries in between them. Then I'd be at six miles. And then I'd jog home for the seventh mile. And I did four of them and it was insanely hard, just like I thought it would be like, just 
sprinting once and going full speed for 50 meters, not to mention the however much accelerating up to full speed for 50 meters taxes you, but just thinking about the second half of doing one of these things, like 50 meters of full sprint, full effort, all out you can go, that's very taxing and challenging. You do not recover from that in 100 meters jogging. Like that's like 60 seconds of like active recovery. Not even close. So like by the third one, I was, I mean, I'm sure the second one was already slower than the first one. By the third one, I was already so tired and in the fourth one, the quality of it had dropped so dramatically that I was like, there's no way I'm doing eight of these. Like, this is insane. Like, this this is during base training. I'm trying to, like, build my mileage, and I'm doing more intense speed work than I did when I was running 400 meter, like, doing 400 meter training. Like, I ran a 48-400 in high school, and we would run, like... I mean, we would do like 200 repeats and we would be, I don't know, like running like 27s and stuff for 200 meter repeats. And by the way, when I do speed work, they have a chart for like, like uh, my workout paces, like I've been telling you, and they have it all the way down for like your speed work when you do 200 meter repeats and 300 meter repeats and then like 400 meter repeats for VO2 max workouts. But for 200 meter speed, I'm supposed to be going 32 to 35 seconds. Uh, and like, I'm telling you, I could be doing like 27 second 200s and it would be way less intense than these strides. So I don't know, I don't know how anyone can think that's not insane. Like their strides. And I know this is a really popular book, so maybe someone will comment. Um, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna do their <laughs> their strides anymore. <laughs> Whenever they say to do strides, I'm gonna like go up to you know maybe like I well like I described, I'll go up to my max speed maybe for a few steps, and then I'll back off of it and decelerate like well before. I hit the 100 meter mark like if they would just say like accelerate to full speed hit full speed at 50 meters and then start decelerating until you're like back to a jog at the 100 meter mark then that would make way more sense to me but they like clearly say to maintain that speed for the remainder of the distance so I don't know what that's about but uh the thing is, is everything I've read in this book, I like love and it really resonates with me and is like exactly what I was picturing myself doing for my training, like before I read the book. And then there were a few things that I didn't know what I was gonna do. And so I'm like, well, I may as well follow what these guys say to do because for all of the things I did know what I was gonna do, it's exactly what they're recommending. And I really like the way they talk about training and just everything was going great. So I was like, okay, I'll. I'll just go all in with, you know, their recommendations, at least for this period of training and see how it goes. Um, except for that, that that's just completely insane and wrong. And I would not, if you have this book and if you read, if you read Fitzinger and Ladder, like they don't know what a stride is and you're either going to injure yourself or like way over train if you are trying to run eight by 100 meter strides where you're going all out for the, 50 meters of it don't do it don't do it so anyway i don't know if i said my goals so i ran the 112 uh 112 two weeks ago i'm trying to i have a big race in july and for that one i'm trying to run a 107 uh so we'll see how that goes i just don't want to get injured i think i might hover around like 45 to 50 miles a week which there isn't really an exact training plan that they have that does that so like they want me to build to 60 miles a week and then like do the base training that builds me to 60 and then i can do the training plan that works off of if you built to 60. 
I'm just afraid to build to 60 right now. I mean, maybe I could just really slowly build to 60. Um, and then, cause I have a long time before my race in July. So instead of taking 10 weeks to build to 60, I could take like 20 weeks to build to 60 and then do their 12 week training program. And honestly, well, I need to lose, I, I'm, I weigh like in the upper 150s and I, like I can see how fat I am. <laughs> like I have like no rib definition cause there's too much fat <laughs> and I have like a belly. So like, I know it's like, I just got a lot of fat to lose. So I'd like to get down to like low 140s or mid 140 or so. So about 12 to 15 pounds. Um, so I could do that while I'm base training before the training gets too intense, where you really want to be properly fueling and not uh, getting your energy off your fat stores for your workouts. Um, and so basically just do a really cautious mileage build while I lose weight. And then that the base training is so much more intense than what like I did to get to 112 in the first place that I bet my like fitness gains would be massive anyway, just off of the base training, not even doing the real training. Um, and then losing all that weight would also, um, I mean, I've seen estimates of how much it would improve my time. I'm not really sure how much it would actually improve my time to get rid of all that dead weight, but um, it, it should help. And then, uh, and then if I, and then after doing all that, if I do a 12 week training cycle, like as they recommend, like I should be getting so fit and 107 should be easy actually. So we'll see what I do if I, if I build up to the 60 or uh, try to modify their training plans to stay around 45 to 50. Um, yeah, so I'll give an update next week and uh, I'm just gonna repeat this 46 mile a week. That's gonna do the exact same thing except I'm not I'm gonna do strides my way on Saturday we'll see how it goes